You're such an asshole. We have a Terry plus a uh, Clary test request. And if you have a Clary test request, you can go to assholeconsulting.com where I, it's only the only one, the only one professional asshole will answer your questions for a fee. Why everybody? Cause he's a huge. Uh, let's just say anonymous. I'm, I like keeping everyone anonymous. Yeah, asshole, please keep me anonymous. I would like to request an analysis and opinion from you on murderer Richard Speck from the Chicago area. I'd like to hear from you how he relates to boomer culture back in the 1960s. If you could also please tie in how he relates to dysfunctional millennial men today, seeing as the guy had major issues with women. I wonder if he could have benefited from red pill knowledge, but I'd also like to see a video on your thoughts. Well, see, man, there's some people who are just like, Let's not confuse, <clears throat> before we get into his background and all that, let's not confuse real mental illness with the designer mental illness that the baby boomer parents and uh, their successive generations of children uh, used as badges of, of courage or, or wear on their armband, all right? People, This is and this is where I really detest and loathe people who because they're losers and they're not mentally ill claim to have a mental illness because it uh, besmirches and belittles those who actually suffer from genuine mental illness. Same thing with <clears throat> those who, uh, you know, those who are, are trans genuinely trans or genuinely not straight. Let's categorize it all. They exist. These people exist. Uh, they, they wrestle with their own problems, mental or not social and all that. And then have a bunch of like teenagers come in like, tee I'm bi too. It's incredibly insane. Like, remember when that gal, Rachel Dolezal, claimed to be black so she'd get specialized treatment in society? Turned out she was a white gal who's just taking tanning pills. That I can't think of anything more offensive than the group they're trying to, <clears throat> I don't know, lie, profit off of cuttlefish. Um, Cuck, essentially. I mean, that's kind of what they're doing, isn't it? So there's people who are legitimately mentally ill <clears throat> for better or worse. And in this case, I, I presume if you're a mass murderer, you got to have some genuine problems with you. Whereas the spoiled little suburbanite Zoomer who doesn't have a real problem in his or her life, that's their problem is they don't have problems and becoming weak and soft. They find things to define themselves by made up problems. <clears throat> oh my goodness. I have the, a touch of the tisms. I have the, hood, the, hood, the hoods. Sp world society. Give me special treatment. I think those are two completely separate things because that's just a weak ass person. They're not going to start murdering people. Uh, I, 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 I could be wrong. And then like, uh, Elliot Rogers, you know, is that, yeah, he, there was some, uh, <clears throat> Venn diagramming. You know, there's some overlap between him murdering people, um, uh, and going on a killing spree and him being, a uh, an incel. Uh, but I, I still think to start taking other people's lives, you gotta have, there's gotta be something really off with you. Whereas the vast majority of fakers and posers with mental illness, detestable as they might be, I don't think they got they got it in them to start murdering people. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a look at them here. Uh, Richard Benjamin Speck, 4191, American mass murderer who killed eight student nurses in their self-deering Chicago residence via stabbing, strangling, fl slashing throats, or combination of the three on the night. See that that consistent. <clears throat> something's wrong. One vis victim was also raped prior to her murder. A ninth potential victim student nurse at Corazon Amuru survived by hiding underneath, uh, beneath a bed. Um, yeah, they're all girls. See something, obviously a sexual connection. I'm, I'm no expert on deranged psychopathic murderers. Convicted on all eight murders on April 15th, 1967, Speck was sentenced to death. His sentence was reduced for, to two, 400 years, reduced to 400 to 1,200 years in, 19, in 1972. This was later reduced to 100 to 300 years. What? What do you really? You're going to waste your time with that? 
Speck died of a natural of a heart attack while incarcerated. Um, early life of crimes. I'm I'm sure there'll be some parallels. I mean, this isn't even really a Clary test. <laughs> Should he run for office? No. Do I want to have a beer with him? No. All right, let's go to the. Uh, let's see if there's anything in the background. Richard Speck, born in Kirkwood, Illinois, was the seventh of eighth children of Benjamin Speck and Matt Mary Carbo. Okay, so they're probably poor. Um, he and his sister were much younger than the other four sisters and older brothers. Mother was religious and a teetotaler. Father worked as a packer and Western stoneware. Monmouth, having previously worked as a farmer and a logger. <clears throat> All right, so they're not wealthy. 47, Speck was six years old. His father died of a heart attack at 53. Speck was reportedly very close to his father. All right, that didn't help. 1953, years later, after the death of his father's mother, married Carl August Rudolph Lindbergh. She and Lindbergh met during a train ride to Chicago. Lindbergh, traveling insurance salesman with a 25-year criminal record that ranged from forgery to several DUIs. Oh, I'm sure this helped. <clears throat> Lindbergh was also a hard drinker, which was the opposite of Speck's father. Speck and his sister Carolyn stayed with their married sister in Mammoth for a few months so Speck could finish second grade before joining their mother in Lindbergh in Texas to the third grade. Uh, so now he's in Dallas. 51 to 66 and 51 after a year in Santo Speck move in with his mother Lindbergh in East Dallas family moved frequently living 10 different addresses. That's not helping usually in poor neighborhoods in the next 12 years. Speck loathed the stepfather was often drunk, verbally abusive and was frequently abused uh, absent. Speck struggled in school, refusing to wear the glasses he needed for reading, repeated the eighth grade part of his fear. People started staring at him subsequently refused to talk to speak in class. Um, started in ninth grade, filled every subject and not return for a second semester, dropping out of school in 58 after 16th birthday. Having started drinking alcohol at the age of 12 by 15, he was getting drunk almost every day. His first arrest was age 13 for trespassing. Okay. The alcohol is not helping either. Um, could be biophysiological rather than just mental. Uh, 60, 63 worked as a laborer, met 15 year old. Uh, Shirley Annette Malone. She became pregnant after three weeks of dating. Okay. So stupid people breeding. Couple married in 62, moved in with Carolyn and her sister. Okay. Just look, not, not a guarantee. All right. Don't be trailer trash. Don't be poor. Okay. Eight lives might've been saved. If good old spec followed Cappy's four rules. Don't have kids. You can't afford. Don't major in stupid crap. Don't commit crimes. Spend less than you make. All right? Just do Being trailer trash doesn't help any situation. <clears throat> uh... Speck's mother lived there and having separated from Lindbergh, now living in California. Speck stopped using the name Richard Benjamin Lindbergh when he got married and went back to using Richard Benjamin Speck. His daughter was born in 1962 while Speck was serving a 22-day sentence jail for disturbing the peace after drunken melee in McKinney, Texas. 63, age of 21, sentenced to, to serve three years in prison after being convicted of forgery and burglary. Forged cash co-worker, ba, 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 robbed grocery stores. <clears throat> Released, arrested again. Attacked a woman in a parking lot of her apartment building, wielding a 16-inch carving knife, but fled when the woman screamed. All right, so that that's different. Wasn't robbing anyone, just decided to attack a woman. And see, this is where I, I don't know. I'm not a forensic scientist. I'm not a psychologist uh why do you go from just robbing and drinking to i'm gonna murder this girl that's a big jump don't you think um and with a carving knife uh speck was convicted of aggravated assault given a 60-month sentence to run concurrently his parole return to prison due to an error was released just six months upon completion uh after his release he worked three months as a driver Although he had six accidents in the company truck, he was fired for to show up for work. Well, <clears throat> I, I don't know if this has much to do with anything with the millennial generation. I know like an absentee father, although his father died early. Um, 
I don't see really, he just, he, this has more to do with Wyoming behavior where you just, you're just trash. Uh, and the alcohol doesn't help out with, if you start drinking at 12, you know, I, I didn't have my first drink until I was 21. I can't imagine what the biophysiological effects on the brain is starting to drink at 12, you know, like taking antidepressants. Ha <laughs> ah! ha! Oh, <clears throat> that's so funny because it isn't me. Uh, 65 pound recommendation of his mother. Speck moved in with a 29 year old divorced woman, ex professional wrestler, and now bartender at his favorite bar, Ginny's Lodge, to babysit her three children. Oh, there's a guy. Oh, this is going to end well. <laughs> We're going to have the guy who wielded a butcher knife watch over my three little children. Come on, baby, light my fire. Um, Malone, who had been separated from Speck, filed for divorce that same month. Speck, Speck stabbed a man in the knife fight at Ginny's Lounge. Uh, but the defense attorney by his mother got the charge reduced to disturbing the peace. How do you? Here's another thing: the boomers. You, you could blame the boomers on this. Like they just like swept everything under the rug. Like, oh, we'll cut the sentence down. Keep them in jail. Got a rap sheet a mile long. Well, whose fault is that? Was it Gen X sitting there in high school? Liberal white women, the cause of all the problems. Well, he just wasn't hugged enough. Let him out. No, keep him in. Keep Mr. Stabby in. Why are there eight dead bodies? <clears throat> we just didn't give him enough love and government money. Uh... Speck was fined ten dollars in jail for three days after he failed to pay the fine. Oh God! I'm surprised there's no mention of drug abuse here. I, I'm imagining his brain was pickled by this time, and he's just not there. This is the last time Speck was in uh, police custody in Dallas, uh, March 1966. Speck bought a 12 year old car, then robbed a grocery store the following evening, stealing seven cartons of cigarettes, <clears throat> which he then sold off the trunk of the car at the grocery store's parking lot. He sold it at, you see what I'm, see, this guy's dumb. He steals the cigarettes at the grocery store and sells it at the same grocery store's lot. Police traced the car, issued a warrant. He had been apprehended under the warrant. It would have been his 42nd arrest in Dallas and would have surely resulted in another prison term. Speck's sister Carolyn drove him to the Dallas bus depot where he took a bus to Chicago. <clears throat> Mammoth. Speck stayed with his sister in the Chicago a few days, returned to his boyhood town of Monmouth, Illinois, where he initially stayed with some old family friends. Speck's brother, Howard Carpenter, got him a job sanding plasterboard. Speck became angry and learned his ex-wife had remarried two days after she was granted divorce. He moved to the Christie Hotel. So most of the time, downtown taverns at the end of March, when Speck was some equipment bar hopping, they were detained overnight by police after Speck reportedly threatened a man in a tavern restroom with his knife. Uh, April 3rd, Mrs. Virgil Harris, 65 year old resident, returned home when he found a burglar in house brandishing a knife. He was a six foot tall white man who was very polite, very spoke very softly, southern drawl. Blindfolded her, tied her up, raped her, ransacked her house, stole two dollars. She had earned babysitting that evening. A week later, uh, Mary Catherine Pierce, thirty-two year old barmaid. Okay, so now he's uh, okay. No offense to the older lady, I can't get it up for older ladies. <clears throat> no, no, something's wrong. Some uh, who knows where. I don't see any correlation between this and like millennials and 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 not even necessarily incels. He got girls. Some disturbed. I guess it would be the alcohol pickling his brain starting at 12. Because by this time, what is he? He's in his 20s. This is a decade in change of drinking, especially during the formative years of your brain. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. This is just this is, this is a crazy guy. Should have been an animal and put down for his own good. But we let me guess why women, we need to give them more money. More government able just haven't given him enough. He never had a chance. Why is he stab? Where are there so many stabbings? Won't somebody please do some? We keep trying to, lady. You kept these, let these guys get out. But I need to feel good about myself. 
Lord, it doesn't stab me. I'm okay. <clears throat> um, 32-year-old barmaid working in a downtown Mammoth, seen leaving the tavern. She was reported missing April 13th. Body was found that day in an empty hose, hog, hose, hog house behind the tavern. She died from a blow to her abdomen and ruptured her liver. Oh, jeez. Speck had frequented Park Frank's place, and the empty hog ho house was one of several he had helped build in the preceding month. So Mon Month police briefly questioned him about Pierce's death. <clears throat> when he showed up to collect his final carpentry paycheck, yeah, those contractors asked him to stay in town for further questioning. Yeah, just ask the guy with 47 arrests and stabbing convictions. Just ask him on his own goodwill to stick around. When police showed up at the Christie Hotel to continue questioning Speck, they discovered he had left the hotel. If you, oh, who knew? <clears throat> who knew? Carrying his suitcases and saying he was going to the laundromat, he had left town instead. Search of his room turned up a radio and costume jewelry. Mrs. Virgil Harris had reported missing from her house. You see, so he saved. He said that's where they start saving trophies. That's the that's the scary stuff. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. April 19th, Speck returned to stay with his sister's second floor, ba -ba -ba, in Old Irving Park, northwest side of Chicago, where she lived with her husband, Gene Thornton, two teenage daughters. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Hang on. Let me, let me ask my black audience something. Let me, I got to ask you this. I got to ask you this. <clears throat> Is this that meme with um, Dave Chappelle? Like, white people, you just... Is this is this like why is he going down in the basement? Is this one of those things? Why are you lent two teenage daughters? Martha worked as a registered nurse in pediatric before she was married. Her husband George worked nights as a railroad switchman. Speck told them an unbelievable story <clears throat> about having to leave Monmouth after refusing to sell narcotics for a crime syndicate there. Gene Thornton, who served in the U.S. Navy, thought the U.S. Merchant Marine might provide a suitable application. Unemployed, he took a Coast Guard application to an apprentice seaman. The application required being fingerprinted, photographed, and having physical examination. Spec found work immediately after obtaining a letter of authority joining. Wow, you could just get a job anywhere. No background check, huh? Um, uh, <clears throat> he worked in the Merchant Marines. After discharge from the hospital, he had an appendicitis. Returned to stay with the sister and to recuperate, he joined the crew again, uh, where he served until June 14th when he got drunk. A quarrel with other boat officers was put ashore on the 15th. Following week, Spe Speck stayed at the St. Elmo, Houston, Michigan house, trying to, ju to visit Judy Lakinemi. 20-year-old nurse aide going through a divorce whom he had befriended in St. Joseph Hospital. Judy gave $80 to help him. Oh, you white girls just enabling the worst of the worst, aren't you? You just, you're going to save him. But I saved the good guy. Oh, I couldn't go out with Mortimer Snurd. I got to go out with the psychopathic stabby guy who got down on his luck. Was she hot, please? I mean, I bet you there's a picture of her. I bet. <clears throat> I bet with a name like that, let's take a look. Oh, she wasn't wasn't too bad looking. Oh, you're going to save, you're going to save him. You're going to save him. Um, Speck left again to stay with sister Martha next few weeks. Uh, brother-in-law <clears throat> joined him in the National Marine Time Union. Ba ba ba. I'm trying to figure out where he Gets into the murdering. We got a long, angry for being sent. Murdering of eight sooner. Here we go. Um, 11 p.m. Speck broke into a house. A townhouse was functioning as a dormitory for student nurses. He entered and using only a knife killed Gloria Davy. Wait, in one shot? Patricia Matusik, Nina Joe Schmally, Pamela Wilkin. Jo who later claimed he was both drunk and high on drugs. Okay. <clears throat> May have originally planned to commit a routine burglary. 
Speck held the women in room for hours, leading them out one by one. Oh, God. I'm not going to read it. Um, Pre-trial. I'm just going to confess this. Speck later claimed he had no recollections of the murders, but he confessed to the crime of Dr. Leroy Smith. Um, Smith did not testify because confession was made while Speck was sedated. Um, confessed to the murders for the first time in public, 1978. Brutal murders required again. He, he again stated he was high that night, but then he undercut the idea that the drugs were the mitigating factor. <clears throat> assume he could have just as well done it sober. I don't know. I don't see, I don't, uh, this is, I don't, see, I just think he had mental problems. I think he had a bad upgrade. I think the booze messed with his brain. I think he didn't have a father around long enough. No discipline. Uh, I don't see the, he had women. He got laid. He had a daughter. I, I don't see this as, I don't see any parallels. Between him and say a Elliot Rogers or the insult movement or whatever. Um, I really don't see it. I guess another question would be what percentage of insults are going out there committing crimes? I mean, I know you got your Elliot Rogers and you know these other guys, these weirdos going on, but is it more I mean in, in fairness, you know, you see the gal who had sex with her daughter with her um students in schools. That that that's sensational makes it seem more common than it is. And there's millions of teachers. You know, what is the incidence rate? Um, so, yeah, uh, no, I think I, I just combination of booze. I don't think it was millennials. I don't think it was the single mom. I don't think it was follow your heart. Money will follow <clears throat> just an alcoholic deadbeat of just avoiding work. So there you go. That was fun. Uh, Sloyd Slimy, five bucks. Concerning the software engineering video, do you think it applies to the robotic automation engineering? Would the PSA requirement be okay with my email question? I I don't know. I don't know about robotics or automation. I mean, I know they run off of software. I mean, you're gonna have to do the research, but I don't know everything. <clears throat> Factions T Lou, two bucks. I turned twenty two today. Good. Congratulations on not dying in 22 years. You, you've made it again. All right, there you guys go. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.